Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Hobby Boss's latest release. This is the 172nd U2A Dragon Lady. And if you're like me, you're a little bit surprised by the size of the box. Um, I don't know why, but I was sort of expecting something bigger. Bearing in mind, this thing has got a wingspan of like 34 centimetres and it's 21 centimetres long. To fit in a little box like that, I don't know. I was just expecting something a lot sort of bigger. But anyway, here she is. Nice little bit of box art in the front, quite simple. So obviously this is the A version, the very early uh, of the uh, U2 spy planes. So, uh, you know, this is one of the first ones. So it hasn't got all the lumps and bumps and all the bigger bits onto it as the more modern versions do today. But anyway, nevertheless, very nice uh, markings down in there. To be honest, that's probably my favourite. I like it with the day -low tail and the nose and the things like that. Uh, again, nice decals down in there. A little bit about the actual uh, aircraft itself. So obviously this is from the 1960s. Uh, kit number for this one is 87270, as you can see, a little bit more down there. So you do get a couple of different versions in this, and then hopefully, is it, no, hopefully I can get in here. Oh, God, that is a tight box as well. There we go, and we are greeted by uh, a little bump sheet about it, obviously stuff that's coming out, so it gives you an idea of some of the nice details we can be uh, looking at. And then down here on the back, we've got a bit of German stuff as well. So very nice indeed. And then we have the said kit. So looks like separate bags, which is a nice touch. So we've got the upper wing surfaces. We've got the lower wings. And looks like we've got some wheel wells and cockpits and things like that as well. And then we've obviously got the tailplanes and the actual the rudder as well in two piece system down in there. So that's quite nice. Then we obviously got the fuselage. Very nice indeed. We've got a couple of hidden bits, which I assume are glassy bits, which is nice to see them separate bagged. As always as well, brilliantly uh, packed all of this. We've got the decals, and again, there's seal bag. And then obviously we've got the all-important instructions where we'll uh, make a start. So, amazing mean the instructions are as big as the kit. So, right, so straightforward into the old instructions. You've got your actual your sprue layout in there, as you can see. Looks like where you're losing all the parts, and it's definitely got the clear parts separately bagged in there. Okay, then over here, it's basically straight into it. So, as you can imagine, a lot of sandwiching down in here. So, obviously, we've got the speed brake area being fitted on the outside. We've got the tail wheel, because obviously it's like a tandem system with the, the actual undercarriage on this. We've got the exhaust going together, which is two part with a fan blade in the back of it, just like that. Then, we've actually got the main gear uh, or the sort of nose wheel-esque uh, area of this one as well so again some nice details down in it and fitting it but it looks like we don't have to put in all the gear which is quite nice all right so that's fine it's talking about opening up some holes as well so obviously we've got maybe some little aerials or lights being fitted into this one as well so making sure you do that then we've actually got the cockpit so the seat itself looks like, like a three-piece seat or four-piece seat the oxygen bottle onto this one go into what will be probably quite a basic tub uh, for the actual uh, cockpit area itself. Then, apparently in step two, you attach, this is, This would be a great quick build, but there we go. So two piece tail system, obviously it's just to fill it into that one, goes down onto the one piece tail planes, which then get fitted onto the fuselage. Wing system goes onto this one. So it looks like you're putting in the top half of the wing. Didn't I see it was a two piece wing or am I just dreaming that? Yeah, it is. It's a two-piece wing, but it doesn't mention it. So, okay. So it says it's two-piece, but it doesn't actually show you the gluing together. And I'm not saying, let's face it, we're all uh, idiots doing this hobby, because clearly we're not. But you think it would mention putting them together. But anyway. Uh, then over to the other side, again, we've got the sort of the main gear, if you like, and then the taily wheel off the tandem system, or I wouldn't know quite what you call it. Uh, speed brakes, obviously, d uh, details being fitted into these. We've got these fillet covers. Uh, over here for the actual leading edge of the wings and then the actual intakes being fitted onto this one uh, then we've actually got the brakes being fitted onto this as well so again you can obviously have it open or closed geared doors we've got a little, little scoop down being fitted we've got those outrigger little wheels the little ones that fall off when it takes off we've got the lower part of the actual wing parts being fitted onto this one and then we've got doors and then we've got a couple of aerials and sensors and lights and various things being fitted onto it pito stuff like that as well so that's down in there in the bottom and then last up You've got a couple more pitots being fitted down onto this one. There's a little system up here at the front and then the canopy, which looks like it's just in the closed. Doesn't look like you can have it in the open, although I'm sure you can actually do it yourself. Then we've got the scrapes on the outside. I think these are actually a little bit stronger type of materials because if it does fall over onto these uh, on landing, it just slides a little bit, which is absolutely fine. And that is it. 
to be honest, I don't know. I thought I was expecting a little bit more out of this one, but I suppose it is 70 second scale. What is beautiful and doesn't uh, fail to impress is the markings for it. So we got this one down in here, which is obviously the standard sort of US Air Force one uh, down in that one. But on the other side, we've got a couple of nice ones. I do like this one with the day glow uh, on the back end and the wing tips and the various things. And with the US Air Force markings uh, with the shadow effect and stuff, that would be the one I would do. And then down in here, we've got an NASA type version as well. Uh, so again, I think it's in the days before that. So uh, it's called, uh, was it NACA? N-A-C-A? Uh, the actual uh, predecessor to obviously with the NASA type things as well. So again, very, very nice indeed. So yeah, good job. Right, so decals. He says, now looking for his knife, I've clearly put my knife somewhere, so we're having to plan B and use uh, a pair of scissors. <laughs> We'll go and use the lethal type knife because otherwise I think the scissors will chew it up. All right, so decals themselves, beautifully protected and bagged as always. So it's that thing about where they uh, have them put on. Those look really very, very nice indeed. Beautiful details. So as you can see, good, solid, clean. Obviously you've got a huge amount of carrier film in this, but it's in one piece. So you haven't got to wor worry about getting these walkways into everywhere. Some of the details, copy details, very sparse, as you might imagine, but pretty good. Very nice indeed. And it's nice that they are protected and done and things like that as well. So let's start in the main fuselage. Okay, so down in here, on sprue D, as you can see. It's not massive, but again, it's typical of uh, Hobby Boss. It's good, clean type stuff on here. And again, there's a lot of webbing uh, off the injection molding, but it's all very, very nice. And again, it's incredibly fine recessed panel lining. Obviously at this scale, we're not seeing much in the way of riveting, although there is a little bit, a tiny bit down in here but uh, not too much to sort of write home about. Some of the small bits and pieces there, lumps, bumps, various things. And again, the inside, obviously inside pretty much devoid of any detail whatsoever, but that's quite good. Lovely to see actually these are one piece intakes, so we don't have to worry about with anything uh, trying to get these in. And again, they look very, very nice, good, clean areas. As you can see, they're nice and clean right the way through. So as long as you get a nice seal on those, should be absolutely fine, no problem at all. So that's very good. Then we've got the wings. So down the hinge out in the wings. Again, beautifully done. I tell you, I, you know, it's nice to see the companies when they keep pushing the type of boundaries on this. And as you can see, this wing, very fine engraved panel lining. And obviously you can whip along with a little bit of riveting on this just to give it a couple bit more depth into it. But you can see really very nice indeed and again it's an infill section so obviously this sort of trailing edge of it in so you've got the other part of the wing that's going to go in there also as well as you can see just down in here this is the jet pipe we've got no ejector pins on the inside of that at all these little guys hanging here is obviously these are for the outrigger wheels that fall off so it's for those little guys on there but that's really nice indeed no problem with that there we got the underside so, down in here, this out. there we go. So, as you say, you've got the underside of this one. As you can see, we've got beautiful detail for the underside of the wing. And then we've got a couple of areas. So, you've got your cockpit tub, which is devoid of pretty much all detail whatsoever. Uh, down in there, we've got the doors. You've got the other one there on sprue B. Then on the inside, as you can see, you do have actually some really nice details down in here for the actual speed brake area. So, if you're going to be having those out, the actual wheel wells look good there's no ejector pins in there or anything else so actually inside of the doors all look nice no problem at all so that's pretty good stuff then we've got obviously the last big sprue down in here got the tail planes and all the small parts on it as you might imagine so if we start up in here, we've got the edges of the seats, the various things making up the seats. This is a, a sort of outrigger area down in there, no problem at all. We've got the speed brakes. And again, it looks like they've got sink marks all over them, but I don't think it is. I think it's just this webbing effect from the actual injection molding. Instrument panels totally devoid, but obviously you've got a uh, decal to go on there. There's your flight yoke 
for it. A few little details down in there as well. We've got the fan section, the gear. It's a little bit flashy, this sprue. You can probably see we've got a little bit of flash on here, but it's not actually on the parts, so that's not too bad. And then tailplanes, trim tabs, very finely done, things like that as well. Rudder, the infill for the rudder, because obviously it's clearly a little bit like this. And we've got the undersides, all the doors and the various bits, all very nice and clear. No problem with that whatsoever. Then I'll start just these doors parts for the gear. We've got the wheels. Very nice indeed. Okay, last up we got the clear parts. So again, the packaging is absolutely beautiful for these. You know, to have it in a little baggie and then it's in a little bit of uh, foam. So if I can get in here. I can even try and get in here. There we go, that's what that's protecting. A gorgeous crystal clear, look at that. Cockpit, very nice indeed. And then obviously if we have a quick look in here. This is for the rear section. So I assume you could open it up if you wanted to. So again, it's that sort of frosted on the top and around the outside, as is on the real thing. So obviously this will be painted, uh, the clear bit isn't. So that's absolutely fine. And I'm assuming you can sort of, you know, have it in the open position if you wanted to. And again, we've got a couple of lights and various things going on with that. But, you know, the packaging, absolutely amazing. So there you have it. So if you are a fan of reconnaissance aircraft obviously high altitude aircraft things like that you've been sport at the moment not only have we got a new tool now uh obviously a 72nd scale u2 uh, we've actually got now a 48 scale blackbird just coming down the line which hopefully i'll be reviewing next week as well so yes lots of different things to come on this one again i think the box it's one of those things it was just a surprise when it first turned up the smallest of the box but looking at it it all sort of makes sense now um you know the actual aircraft itself isn't that long and it's quite gangly obviously with its wings uh, done but actually I think this is a nice scale because obviously if you're into the 48 scale things like that it gets very gangly very quickly and unless you're going to hang it on the wall or something it can be a little bit problematic of where you're going to put something with such a large wingspan uh, but you know you need a big shelf to put it on in the first place or a cabinet or wall hang it really at the end of the day so again I think 72nd is perfect for this one and the detail is absolutely spot on so I think really maybe a little bit of riveting onto it just to liven it up if you're into that thing but straight out of the box you'll be well away with this particular kit so there we go that's the hobby boss 172nd u2a dragon lady